hot tubs acting up again. I blew a cartridge fuse that's kind of an odd size. It's They're very expensive to buy. I use them in some meters. And I even tried to make one out of a regular fuse I stacked this end on. And I put them both in this cardboard tube. <laughs> yeah, you notice a little burn mark on the tube. Well, it not only failed, I put a 15 amp in for a 20 amp fuse. And I know that with the proper cartridge fuse I can put a 15 in there. I've had 15s before in there. And they usually hold pretty well. You know, they'll eventually blow at a random time. If you don't use the 20. And I don't really know why the 20 blew, so... I don't know if I have another problem in the circuit or what. This is that SC type fuse that the hot tub uses. I've seen it in some uh, meters too. It's a fairly chunky fuse. It's ceramic and typically these are filled with like a sand inside so they're explosion proof. If you use the wrong voltage rating on a fuse what can happen is when the fuse bursts you form an arc of vaporized metal. If the distance is too small then that arc it can sustain itself, be hot enough to sustain itself and burn back you know both ways and cause a major meltdown until the arc you know until it has to span a big enough distance to open up. So that's why a fuse that has the full voltage rating, like in a 3AG, if it carried the full voltage rating, it would have an element that was the same thickness all the way from cap to cap, you know, in a glass tube. But the ones that are neck down like this, well, on the caps, it only says 32 volts. You know, on the end caps, if you look at the end caps on it. And here I'm putting it in a, basically powering a motor. I believe it was powering 120 volts. It might have had 240 I don't know if I could see the whole 240 or not. I don't have a real definite circuit on that anymore. Anyway, this fuse, even though it's totally blown and the glass is shattered, uh, the more I fuss with it, the less it conducts, but it still conducted even after all of that. When I first tested it, it was in the few hundred ohms, but now it's in the K ohms. The more I dink with it, the more it's going to go up. I might have just ruined it. So that's a fuse that went through hell and shattered and blew up. It's still conducting a little bit. That's also why you see springs in fuses sometimes. They want it so that when it does blow, it'll pull back and widen the gap. So, to resist arcing. I'm going to use my heavy duty weller here just to make it quick and dirty. A little too much power for my little... Unger ceramic tipped guy. And normally you don't solder to these uh, crimped connectors, you just crimp them and go. But since this is being used in a kind of a damp environment outdoors, I've found that soldering them really helps. I don't end up getting hot ends. And then I'm going to try to get that heat shrink back on and re-shrink it. I got on the subject of fuses because I blew the cartridge type fuse that goes in this hot tub. It's, um, you can pay 10, 11 bucks for the stupid fuse. Um, get it online for about 7 usually. You can get it at some hardware stores in a 2 pack with a 15 amp fuse for about 15 bucks, 16 bucks, but that doesn't do me much good. Don't really need that 15 amp fuse. So, and my local hardware store had 10 and 30. My Dublin General store had 10s and 30s this time. They didn't have anything in between. So that was a no-go, and it's kind of good it wasn't. Um, as much as I'm lecturing about the voltage limits of fuses and how they can arc across and cause disaster, the ATC fuses are frequently abused in that regard. Uh, they're frequently used in higher voltage applications than they uh, were really intended to be used for. In the cable TV industry, 
the voltage is uh, 90 volts in most plants, 90 volts AC. And they were using ATC fuses anyways in the amplifiers, you know, the manufacturers. Because uh, they're convenient. They plug in, you know, little blade fuses they plug right in. Nice, easy to go. Another ni nice thing about ATC fuses is for temporary use. And this is a shunt here, but it could be a fuse. You can you can bridge two quick connects. Sometimes you got to tighten them up a little bit to make them feel fit snug. And right now I've got a fuse and a couple of quick connects right here. And it's really a bad way to go. You know, it's, these aren't rated for any kind of voltage. But uh, I unplugged the motor, and now the fuse holds. Part of my troubleshooting process. I thought my short might be one of my relays had melted down or something crazy. So looking at all my stuff first, you know, I'm thinking something I did. Uh, unfortunately, the short traces all the way back to the motor. And I got the right voltages at the uh, outlet of this thing where the motor plugs in. The motor's got a nice Molex connector so it can be uncoupled with the four connections of the motor. Ground, neutral, red and black. Red and black are high speed and low speed. They're not the two... Uh, 240 volt legs, you know, the 120 and 120, they're just a, the same 120 leg for high or low, I mean, yeah, for high or low, one or the other. They're not meant to be powered sequentially, I mean, uh, at the same time. But right now I've got it on both windings, and I don't know if it's the starter circuit, but I read a dead short from the high speed to the low speed terminal on that motor. And I read very low from uh, neutral to either high or low, about 0.7 ohms. And the meter gives me about 0.1 ohm, you know, at the lowest, so it's like 0.6 ohms. And even for a starter, that seems a little bit off for me. You know, for a starting circuit, it's going to pull more current than the running current of the motor, but that still seems kind of high. Kind of low, which would be high, if you follow me. So into the big cavity here and pulled the motor out which is no easy task four bolts with little plastic wing nuts the plastic wing nuts peel off to reveal uh, an allen head underneath them since the plastic you know couldn't take the force needed to remove them because of the corrosion of sitting here for you know this thing is probably 20 years old at this point or darn near so, you know, basically at this point, am I going to get a new hot tub? Am I going to buy a new motor? Um, before I go all, to all that thought, I going to make sure I can't fix this motor. Maybe the start circuit is stuck. The power in most uh, CATV systems is 90 volts AC. And they still use those ATC fuses, even for that voltage. And they do flash over and burn sometimes, but generally they work. And they say, all oh, these aren't fuses, they're in there just for power directors. But we all use them as fuses. I take the shunts out of amps that come with shunts and put fuses in. Because they still give me some measure of protection. And it's surprising how well they contain a good flash. You know, the center part will be totally blackened. Not a high voltage flash, but they, they seem to contain flash over pretty well. At any rate, I'm glad I did that because it cost these terminals for temporary instead of buying that expensive fuse because I ended up blowing several, you know, of these fuses in troubleshooting. And finally, I just unplugged the motor from the, this guy, and no longer do I blow a fuse. I mean, my short's gone, so... Time to look at the motor more carefully. It's not looking great. I don't think they intended this motor to come apart. They kind of smashed it in certain locations. So to try to disassemble it any further, I'm going to try to unbend the metal somehow and try to wedge that piece out. It's not going to be pretty. This mode is probably history. The reality is, even if I was able to clean up the contacts on the starter circuit and lube it, you know, and get it freed up, do I really want to risk this thing hanging again, you know, in a year or two versus a new motor? I don't know. If I can get it apart, if I could get it apart, I would. But it looks like it's not going to come apart gracefully. It's not meant to be taken apart any further than this. 
and even though this panel is below a panel a uh, cover that pretty much seals it still one bolt of the four bolts in a nested little thing here it's just packed with mud all the way like a mud dauber uh, wasp I wonder if it was done before it was finally assembled in the factory maybe it was left like this open in the factory for a while I can't see them getting in maybe it's in this little hole but this hole mates up to something or maybe not to see how it goes on maybe that hole is enough at any rate you wonder how mud can get inside of a clean environment that's your answer I guess I've tried miscellaneous tools on the uh, crimps here straightened a couple of them out a little bit I think but most of them are they're not going easy I think I'm gonna try uh, drilling them actually I'm probably gonna wait though until I get my I ordered a new uh, I ordered a couple actually center punches since I'm always having so much trouble drilling I got a what's called a prick center punch it makes a real small dent if I get right in the middle of the crimp and don't wander out of it and drill into that crimp it's a moderate sized drill bit now that I should be able to bend what's left of it into like two little mini tabs instead of one big tab and put it back together eventually but if I make a hole I should be able to unbend them pretty easily I'm hoping it's pretty thick metal it looks like they uh, put this holder around looks like this holder holds the two pieces of metal together basically this uh, mount I guess they just buy this raw motor from GE they keep advertising GE all over it but it's not you know it's uh some other brand with it powered by GE you know kind of thing so I guess they buy this part from GE and they put their own plastic ends on and their own pump on and the way it goes the pumps kind of nice you know it's never cracked all the temperatures it's been through I'm sure it's been getting a little bit of freeze action in it it's been a real good pump